Hey guys, this is Tomek from StageFig.net. In this video, I want to show you how you can automate your virtual machine configuration when creating new compute instances. For that, I will define the startup and also shutdown scripts. After this brief demo, I will show you when you want to avoid the startup scripts and perhaps consider using custom template functionality. I'm starting with creating a normal Linux instance called WebServer1. Let me allow HTTP traffic on firewall and select Management Security Disk Networking section to get additional options. There's a section called Automation and the Startup script. Here you can define your script in a couple of languages. I will just define a couple of commands in the bash shell. The first line of my script is the definition of the language used. Then I'm executing the command to update all the packages and to install Apache 2. The last command would be to change the default welcome page to message hello world, installed on and the current date. That's just a simple example of how you can customize your VM during the startup process. Alright, since the script is ready, let's accept all the other default settings and continue with the VM creation. While the VM instance is creating, I want to remind you that the layout of GCP templates might look a little bit different in the future. Don't be surprised, Google loves to update their graphical interfaces. Since we do have tasks to be run in the startup scripts, such as Apache 2 installation, I will give it a bit more time before I will verify if everything is set up according to our design. Ok, I think it's time to check if our web server is responsive. And yes, it is. We see our custom made welcome page with the timestamp. Now let me go back to the console and connect to the machine via SSH to further edit the welcome page. Just after a brief moment the session should be established and we can continue with editing the index.html page. I will edit the web page adding one additional header using Vim. Once the Vim is opened, let me change the background settings so the colors are easier to read and let me add additional header with this is my custom change and, and greetings for everyone. And I think that's the sufficient change to prove the point. Let me save the results and go back to the web page to see if it's already updated. And of course it is, but just to give you a proof. I also mentioned that we can take advantage of shutdown script. To do so, first let's take advantage of the help and documentation to find out how. I will look for shutdown script and the first result that pops up it's an article from the official documentation. Perfect. It opens in the new window and you can check all the details. Something to mention, the shutdown script has usually only 90 seconds to complete. If it doesn't, the system will be stopped regardless of the completion status. So let's scroll down to find the usage and in console we can use metadata section with the shutdown script metadata key. Alright, I think we are all set. Let's close down the documentation. Let me edit my instance. To do so, I'll go for the VM instance details page and use the edit button. This is non-disruptive operation, so the instance is still running in the background. I will scroll down to find the metadata section. As you can notice, we already have one key value pair, this is startup script. Let's add another one for the shutdown script. The value text field is quite narrow. Pay in mind that my shutdown script would only contain two lines. The first one I'm defining the language and in the second line I echo the simple message shutdown at timestamp uptime was result of uptime command. And let me append this output to the text file within the root directory. This is just a simple example of the shutdown script. In the production systems you might want to stop some application, save some results, any actions that has to be done before the machine is closed. In our case, that will do it. Alright, 
Once this is completed, let me save the results. Saving shouldn't take long and once this is saved, I will go back to the SSH session to execute the reboot command to actually see if the shutdown script will be run. But bear in mind that making this video is actually taking a bit more time than it takes it to watch it. That's why I already have 57 minutes of uptime. Anyways, I just wanted to mention that so you are not surprised. Let's execute the reboot command and I will increase the speed of the video for a couple of seconds because the reboot might take up to a minute. During the reboot my SSH session was obviously lost, so let me try to reconnect to it. Once we've got the connection back, we do. Let me clear the screen a little bit so it's easier to see the new commands. Alright, so let me verify if the shutdown script actually worked. Let's check if there is the history.txt file created. And there is. We see the information about the uptime and we see the information when the machine was closed. Perfect. Now let's verify if our web server is working. Let's navigate back to the GCP console and click on the external IP address. And surprise, the page is different. We lost our custom modification. It's because our startup script was designed to install Apache 2 and change the welcome page. And that was our intention during the creation process. However, you have to remember that the startup script will run every single time the machine is rebooted, stopped and start again. If you are going to use the startup script only to adjust the standard image to your needs, you might consider using the custom image feature. Let me quickly modify the welcome page again and I'm going to use this instance as a source for my custom image. Now I will verify if I'm happy with my modifications. Once I am, I will shut down the virtual machine. This way I know that my file system will be consistent and I'm going to use the boot disk of this instance to create my custom image. Since the machine is stopping, I will speed up the video. The whole process should take no more than 2-3 minutes to complete. Once the machine is stopped, we are ready to create our custom image. For that let's navigate to the images section and create an image clicking create image button. I will give it a more meaningful name and as a source disk I'm going to choose my web server 1. When you create the new instance by default the boot disk is called same as the VM that's why we see disk called web server 1. Anyway accepting all the other default settings and now our custom image creation is in progress. It shouldn't take that long however it needs couple of seconds. In the meantime, I will navigate to the list of all the images. Pay attention that we also see here all the public images. We can filter out the results, for example based on the project ID, to see only our images. And after a few more seconds, we got the confirmation that the image is ready. Let's navigate to the VM instance and create a new instance right away using our newly created image. I will give some funky name to my second web server, web server 2, and I will navigate to the boot disk section and change it to my custom image. I should already see it in the custom image section. And there it is, web server 1 image. Let's select it and accept all the other default settings, just adding HTTP traffic on the firewall level. To show you how easy it is to reuse the custom image, let's go ahead and create another instance. Since the default location of our custom image was set as a multi-regional in the US, let's go ahead and change the region to US East 1 for example. Time to select our custom image as a boot disk. If for some reason you wouldn't see your image in this section, it might mean that you are trying to create a VM in a regional zone where the custom image is not available due to the location settings during the custom image creation. In this case it is, so let's accept HTTP traffic and creating the virtual machine is in progress. It might take up to a minute, I will speed up the video so you don't have to wait. Alright, since this is done, let's verify the status of our web server 
and we can see our final custom image created. It will be the same across reboots because Web Server 2 and Web Server 3 do not have any startup scripts set. Startup and shutdown scripts are not coded on the OS level, so when we created an image based on the existing instance, it only took the current state of the instance as our source disk. Ok, I think it's time to clean up the mess. So in this video I wanted to show you how you can automate the modification of your VM instances by using the startup and shutdown scripts. What you have to remember that the startup script doesn't run only during the creation, it runs every time the machine is booting up. So it might be a good consideration to prepare your source instance, create the custom image out of it and even use the combination of both. So have your application installed in the custom image and use the startup script in the instance for example to update some packages or tweak some settings that for example changes a lot. Now I just said for example way too many times, but I hope you get what I mean. Anyways, thanks for watching, I hope you learned something here. Please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and don't be shy to ask any questions you have regarding this topic. Cheers!